All right, Jeff, let's stay on brass tacks here. Sorry, but anyway. You're good. All right, let's talk a little bit about that multiple line scenario. Right, right, right. And uh, this, this, position discipline. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, th this, is, this is a scenario that's all across the country. And in some cases, the scenario is even exaggerated because now we're seeing uh, four and five stories of wood framing. And we're seeing like a concrete base, maybe have stores underneath or even parking decks and that wood framing on top for several floors. It's being allowable and I guess it was just accepted here locally. It's Somebody, the new uh, mixed multiple. Remember that's what we used to call them? Yes, yes. A mixed multiple. So, so regardless, if it's platform construction, Everybody used to think that platform construction had inherent fire stopping. It's inherent fire stopping in the framing in phase, but once we had the trades would come in and look, it's nothing you're gonna stop, but they start putting the duct work, the plumbing, the uh, HVAC, they put in the uh, electrical runs and things like that, but then all that inherent fire stopping in the shaft ways goes down the tubes because now you've got those openings for running all those utilities and so forth. So the fire problem is still there okay the potential is still there okay so recently we were talking about and working with three-story buildings like we were down south okay and we're going to say in this case a three-story wood frame building this is your pipe chase from the bottom runs all the way up into the cock off and through the roof you see so many of these flat roof structures or even gable roofs now with the white pvc piping you know for the vent stacks for your plumbing poking through Fire in the first floor here works its way into that pipe chase. And next thing you know, you got fire going from the first floor, and now it's working its way to the second floor, okay? All right, it's gonna make a smoky fire because you're talking plastic piping. It does make a tremendous amount of smoke. I mean, it's, it's just one of those things that we deal with now, okay? All right, so the engine that arrives first to the scene Radio communications, engine one's on the scene. We have a three-story frame structure, multiple dwelling and so forth. Working fire, first floor. Medium smoke condition at this time, okay? Like we talked about in the previous video and other videos is that we'd like to see that line get laid. And in most cases, your line should be an inch and three-quarter line. Because this is the one that we say is our interior line the flows, especially if you have that 15 16 nozzle tip on it, 50 PSI nozzle pressure, it's going to give you the flow that you would take in and it would handle most of the fires that you're going to come across. If you're using a fog nozzle, I'm going to make a suggestion. Take a look at the technology that's out there. Look at the 50 PSI fog nozzles. 50 PSI, 175. 175 gallons a minute at 50 PSI for a fog nozzle. And if you're looking one step beyond that, go for the breaker parts. Have your 15, 16 solid slug at the 50 PSI tip or slug and a 50 PSI fog nozzle. Your that, guys will love you for it. Because that, that Elkhart Chief just settles the arguments. So. Yeah, it does. It's beautiful. It does. It does a great job. And again, that thing that we talked about was pumping it at 50 PSI. No over, no under, okay? That's the design pressure, okay? Don't confuse the American firefighter with all your little formulas and shit like that, okay? Stick right with the job. Okay, so that's our line going in. Make, you know, think about your hose beds. When you're dealing with these buildings, are you going to be dealing with cars in the parking lot? Well, that's where, if you got cars in the parking lot, that might preclude your engine from getting into position properly, then you might need a static hose bed. Pull off what you need, break it, hook it into the Y, and that's it. Make the call for water. You got your hose laid out. You got your working length right here at the front door. And when you're dealing with these buildings back home, I want you to think about that. Yeah, everybody says, oh, we need 100 feet for our working length at the door. No, you don't need 100 feet. How deep are these apartments that you're going in? 30, 40 feet at the most? So when you think about that, be, be, let's be commonsensical about that, okay? But yeah, anyways, that, you've got your line here, okay? And here's the point where you mask up. And again, you like I said, you got a medium smoke condition. Without any water getting in this fire, it's gonna become a heavy smoke condition, okay? So that's gonna be 
the, the cost for multiple lines. Set your engines up so as personnel come available. And again, here's the thing before we get into that second line. Does your department require the second engine crew to team up with the first engine crew to make sure the line is all stretched out properly, free of kinks, and that they got enough guys to get in and start making a push in the fire? If that's it, well, then it's going to be a little bit before that second line gets stretched. Okay? The other thing is, this line goes on the attack. Okay? So once they knock those flames down there, and that we need tools, you need the hooks, because you've got to start opening up the ceilings and the walls. Don't be afraid of that kind of damage. It's that kind of mentality that has allowed fires to burrow in there. You thought you got it out. You said, okay, we got our fire under control. Let's back this line out. And next thing you knew, fire is starting to pop out above you and the floor above, or the suite above in this case, okay? So don't be afraid to pull the ceilings. That's what it's all about. Again, this goes back to the old days of the combat engineers. But let's say we don't have enough personnel. We're going to get a line in here because we have fire popping up there. Again, is your department a big department where you have multiple engines that everybody kind of knows the next dance step of the next routine or the next song that's coming up? <laughs> if that's not the case and you're working with automatic aid, mutual aid, other fire departments, once again, standardization of hose beds and equipment is key. So, all right, these guys get in there. Once again, it's the same thing, man. You need those hooks you're gonna, and, and uh, axes and halligans and whatever to get those walls and ceilings open up, okay? You've got to chase this thing down in some cases. Who's, uh, who would be working that front door turn in that stairway? From what crew, the, the first line? Okay, good point. So there's your Fire nozzle, 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 nozzle right there. Yep. Okay. Firefighter in the nozzle right there. Officer of that first engine should be right there with that nozzle. Right behind that nozzle, man. Okay. That's his position. Not out in the cab. You're not doing a damn bit of good and you're worth nothing when you're out there. You see nothing. You don't know what these guys are up against in a medium to heavy smoke condition. Okay. Your job as company officer is right here. That's your position on the fire ground. Get in there and tick and talk, right? You are the troubleshooter. If yeah. anything goes wrong, or once fire uh, uh, has been knocked down, that's your transmission. Why would we think they would put a kid with two, three, or four years in a job on a nozzle, let him go after the fire, and then he's going to be responsible to make, uh, make the transmission? We got the fire knocked down. You can uh, do whatever, you know. Oh, that kind of kills off what an officer's value is supposed to be about, especially on a, 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 an officer on an engine, okay? If we have a second crew assigned to that first line for its efficiency, spread these guys out, okay? Spread these guys out. If you have everybody on air, that means now we got two crews that need air supply, <laughs> you know, and need exchange of personnel to hold that position. Does that make sense? No, that's not good use of your personnel. Spread your people out so when these guys' bells go off or whatever, well, then you got people ready to go. This company officer right here is the guy who makes sure that line plays in. This is a training issue. This is a discipline issue in your, in your department and so forth. And once again, if you're working with other fire departments, this is something we got to be aware of. So second crew, or excuse me, a second line. Let's put the second line. Okay, same process, nozzle and fire. As this line goes up the stairs, you might need this firefighter to help hump it up. Or it might be that officer, that second crew right there to help hump it up. Think about that, because this is also accountability. This guy can be accountable for these guys here and this crew here. We got a line going upstairs. Okay, yep, 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 only two guys went up. I've been in fires, and I remember one very, very clearly. I wasn't on an engine, and I was working back in my days in a squad. And we had these, you know, those big old apartment buildings. You've seen pictures that I put out there. And we were upstairs, and there was nobody holding accountability, and the fire came roaring up the stairways behind us. One guy bailed out the windows, you know, and we were trapped momentarily until they didn't get a line in there. Nobody knew it. That's accountability. 
So here we have accountability about, okay, got a line going upstairs, how many guys? Well, that's engine four or whatever that number is. And uh, that's it. So, okay, these guys get in there and they see that the fire's moving up. You need another line. So let's think about that. So, you're do, so your city or town has these buildings and they're going up everywhere. Your population is booming. Your fire department is running with engines that are limited to two pre-connected cross lanes, 200 foot in each one, okay? You got a thousand feet or 12 miles of five inch hose on the back <laughs> and a little bit of two and a half. Hello? What, right. Is this starting to... Right. Are okay. you hauling water or are you attacking fire? What, uh, what, yeah. What's your mission? Right. All right, let's get to that third line. Okay. What happens? Here? Okay, so again, here's your engine. And everybody says, oh, all these things. Look, in William Clark's book, Firefighting Your Principles of Practices, he talked about the old days, the old thinking, the old mentalities, and how we've improved. We've improved our apparatus. You no longer have gasoline engines, standard transmissions, uh, rotary gear pumps. Some of the old principles, like the first three lines should come from three different engines on three different hydrants. That made sense back then because of the gears, uh, like I said, the, the rotary gear pumps and things like that, they just weren't efficient. And the standard transmissions, we don't have that problem now. We have engines that are more powerful than ever before. The centrifugal pumps, the technology that goes into the uh, construction of those things, my God, you know, we could pump from here to Steubenville. You know, I which, mean, which is a long way, by the way. Yeah, a long way. <laughs> so if you don't know where Steubenville is from here. So they're able to do that. All we got to do is get that water supply into the engine. And Jeff, you, you know what we tell people when we're going out there and we're doing training work, we tell them, you count the turns in your hydrant. You know every hydrant on your system. You make sure that hydrant's all the way open and that the intake's all the way open just for this. This is a this is an everyday fire across the country. So, okay, the third line. So that means our hose beds should be set up where we're going to stretch a third line. Okay. To the third floor. Mm -hmm. Got it? How many feet of hose have we used so far? Yeah. How close is that engine? Because the truck gets the building or should get the building okay especially in that building oh right yeah yeah we need some truck monkeys absolutely they're so gonna, they're gonna need to open this place up throw the stick if that's what you got or get the bucket up there all right remember this is a wood frame building so so who, who's managing the turns there right here yep all the way up well, okay, see, this is the thing about stretching dry as far as you can, because if this is an enclosed stair shaft right here, remember, once you open the door to that apartment with a medium to heavy smoke condition or developing heavy smoke condition, this thing fills up without any ventilation. Again, do we have windows that we can take out, or do we have the truck opening to draw out? Is that the best place to cut the hole? They might not be able to simply because of the fire's position. Because if we draw this fire over here, okay, and pull it up through the building. It's not good. Yeah, so you gotta think about this. Okay, once again, here's the problem. So this pipe chase is taking it up. And again, without this line being able to get in position quickly, again, your, your inch and three quarter line, low pressure, 50 PSI nozzle, how many feet are you going to need? Well, that might have to come from a static bed, or you might have to piece it together, you know, in this case. And so uh, these are all considerations. SL means supply line. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Good. okay. So you got your first line crew, boss, in on that, not with the nozzle man. Second engine in was helping with the first line. They're spread out, helping move line in. Boss is accountable at that first entry. So now the second line's in place. Does the second line people, do they help that third line get up to three? They might have to, absolutely. Yeah. Because you know, right. as we saw recently, you have a narrow hallway, okay? And that's another thing I want you to uh, you know, think about. You go to any of your apartment buildings, even the older ones, how wide is the hallway? 
Yeah. You can almost go like this and touch the walls, okay? You don't have a lot of room to work. And so that hose, you got to get it up there and get it in a straight line as much as you can. Well, this here, we're going upstairs. We're winding upstairs. That's going to eat up a couple of lengths of hose right there. Sure. So one, two, three, four, five. You're talking at least a five length stretch. If this engine is reasonably close, okay, to the fire building. Static hose beds, man, that's the answer, okay? If you have a situation where you want to go with two and a half inch hose, static bed, finished off with 100 feet of inch and three quarter, or 100 feet of two inch hose. Two inch hose with a, with a solid bore, one and one sixteenth inch tip, or the XD nozzle, 250 gallons a minute and 50 PSI. Man, very doable. You know, killer line. And a two inch line, you only talk at 68 pounds of water weight in a 50 foot length. You know, so you've got great flow, intermediate size hose line that's got maneuverability and the weight isn't gonna kill your guys. This line here, I wanna throw it out to you. Would this line here going up to this level require extra personnel? Let's say you got a three member engine company. Yeah, yeah they can get three yeah. people can get it up in most cases, take it dry as far as you can. So like they I take said, it dry to the second, they're masking up, they're getting ready to run yeah, up there. If they can do that. Yeah, and then that the personnel on the first and second right. line, they're working their turns there anyways. Yep. They can work the turn for that third line as they go by. Right. And, and then it keeps them accountable because they're disciplined and they're at the place they were assigned right. to be. You're not getting guys from the first line up on right. the third floor helping hump hose. Yeah. You know? Right. Now, here's another thing. Okay, let's say we have windows in the stair shaft. Okay. If this fires into the cock loft and that truck hasn't gotten upstairs or to the roof to open it up, to let it out. And now, this isn't a one line job up here. <laughs> this is not a one line job for the third floor. Once again, rope stretch. Okay, but the other thing too, what's going on in the back side of the building, okay? We have windows here, ground ladder, okay? And again, you're not gonna put all your eggs in one basket. I hope your firefighting acumen and all that other stuff, you know, makes you realize that, yeah, we got a lot of stuff coming off this engine. Yeah, it's gonna do the job, but again, there's how many sides do fire? Six. Six. So this demonstrates that firefighting is a numbers game. Absolutely. And there's a lot Absolutely. of there's a lot of communities that aren't going to be able to put thirty guys on a fire. Right. However, if you've got these buildings, you need to figure out your worst case scenario. How do we get yeah. three or more lines in service? Right. Who's going to do it? What's it going to look like? Well, let's just throw this one out there. Go back to that two inch line. The, the 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 potential of that two inch line, as you as you know, we go out and we show people how to flow 240 to 260 gallons a minute consistently through two inch line. Well, if we only got three people on the engine, two people can get that line stretched. If you got a good body of fire, now you got some good knockdown power, and that's what we're looking at. Knocking it down, and maybe that'll get us a step up on this fire. So when the rest of the cavalry comes on the scene, which again, may be a piecemeal approach, depending on where you're located and so forth, but it might be just what you need to hold this thing till we get another line stretched and reinforcements come and so forth. Yeah. So this is a, this is, this is a, like we said, a fire that's happening across the country every, every day in this country. And the thing is, truck work complements engine work. That's, that's so important. I just don't get it why we can't figure that out. You know, truck work complements engine work, especially in a situation like this. Yeah. So That's why we need that truck crew to split. We need inside and outside guys. Right, right. It's yeah. gotta happen. So, yeah. And uh, so, okay, fire's out and so forth. We've had fire on, on all three floors and uh, the thing is, uh, the question, well, 
I'm the officer on this line or this line or this line, so I'm just going to back my guy down. I think we got the fire out. We got all, we got our fire out is what they're saying. We have our fire out, so we're out of here. No, 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 no. See, that's where the incident commander, the battalion chief, or the assistant chief running the show, you can't be in a rig half a block away with your crayons doing this stuff. You're supposed to be at that fire. If you want to have a command post set up, especially when you have multiple lines, multiple companies, yeah, absolutely. It totally makes sense. But have good view of the fire. That was one of the things that was taught many years ago. View and visibility about what's going on. When it comes time to withdraw lines from this building, in the old days, it was called orderly withdrawal. Emmanuel Freed talked about it in his writings. And the idea was, these guys are depending on this line and they're depending on this line to put their fire out so it doesn't get up and trap guys. Remember, you're gonna have truck guys running around in here or squad guys or whoever else may be available to do searches, to do ceiling pulls and other things like that, search for fire in heavy smoke conditions. Well, if the shit hits a fan, okay, or if we have people taking their lines out, let's say these guys say, oh, we got our fire out, they pull their line out. The fire relights or reignites or whatever, okay? And now it starts involving this place and work its way out here. But again, you're gonna have the building open up maybe at this point and it's gonna create a draft, mm -hmm. okay? We've seen that, we've all experienced that before. <laughs> oh my gosh, you know, there it is behind us. This is the whole thing about these people and fire ground discipline and those into the commander, battalion chief, assistant chiefs, making sure things are in place and accountability is in place. Okay? You might end up with five or six or however many lines in this fire. That's just a guess, depending on how big the building is, how many crews you got on the scene. If you have a simple structure like this, or do you have a U-shaped, or do you have a circular building where the fire's going that way, that way, that way, that way? <laughs> you know, are we gonna fight this fire or are we gonna try to cut it off? Are we gonna hit it hard here, cut it off over here and try to localize it? You know, that's the thing that calls for more people, more equipment, and accountability and so forth, so. So, that, so those top lines come down first, right? Top line would come down so first. So in this case, last in, first out. Uh, yeah, that's a good way of saying it. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Again, these guys, and, and that was another thing about the old chiefs. The old chiefs, like I said, and I'm going to tell you, not every one of them was great or even, you know, even competent. You know, you always like, oh my God, you know, this guy. No, but the good chiefs you knew, and those guys were all over those fire buildings. They would go up there and they would check everything out. Okay, we got everything out. Okay, good. Uh, Chief so and so, to, you know, second floor. Second floor, what's they looking like down there? Eh, we got another control chief. Okay, hey, third floor, you guys, you guys take your line out, okay? That chief would go down there and check that out. In other words, yep, okay, we're okay up here, we're okay down here, we're okay. And then, of course, this is another thing. There would be a last walkthrough. Because this isn't one, a one room fire. Right. This is a several floor fire. So, you know, I think that's one of the things about us old guys, you know, we saw it back then, how it would fall in place, you know, and uh, I don't know. Part of that is just being that chief officer, that's, that building's your responsibility. Right. You know, you, you're, not gonna be, you're not gonna be able to say, well, yeah. the guys on the second floor didn't do a good enough job. I told them to make sure it was good before they came out. Right, right. That, that shit don't fly. That's it's, the whole thing about the company officers yeah. being on those hose lines. They're accountable for that, okay? And, and I know when you say company officer, you, you somebody Lieutenant responsible. Captain or, or senior firefighter. Senior firefighter, okay? right. And that was the other thing. You know, we're talking like there's one chief in the scene. There wouldn't be in this fire. Oh, no. Yeah, there would be several chiefs. Well, we're talking about the guy who's in charge of the overall picture. Once again, one of my heroes, Leo Stapleton. Oh, my gosh. You know, just, you know, you, you get a sense of what he was all about. Once again, the old time chief. That was their building, as you said. Their building, their firefighters, their everything there. Okay? And they knew it come down to them. So, yeah. None of this stuff where you're relying on some 
somebody with two or three years in the job is now a lieutenant or a captain or even a chief, like you see in some places, you know. So I got four years on, I, would, I got a white shirt and gold and so forth like that. It's like, oh my God. So, yeah. yeah, you're all of a sudden responsible for people's lives and property, but more importantly, your crew. If you're in that, if you're in that fast growing organization and, and the way the world is, you've got young people in charge, all the more reason to be humble and careful because oh, you yeah. don't have the experience behind sure. you. Yep. Yeah. 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 These, these kinds of fires, they've always been there. Now they're in different types of construction. So, same problems. Yeah. Same solution. Oh, uh, yeah. Lots of lines. And as, Lots uh, of people. Yeah. And engine work is complemented by truck work. So, kind of a simplistic overview, but, you know. We get it. Oh, yeah. All right, great. All right, super. Thanks. And that's what we'll be working on.